I am Molly Birnbaum, Editor-in-Chief of America's Test Kitchen Kids, here with Chef Olive and Chef Gabby Melian. We are so excited to be here with you today. And can you tell us a little bit about what we're gonna be cooking in our pandemic kitchen? Of course, hi Molly and hi Olive, how are you? Uh, we are going to be making chicken empanadas, but this is a, a simpler version that it can be done uh, with a leftover rotisserie chicken. So it's a, it's a super simple, um, easy, and something that you can have um, even already cook in your fridge, just heat them up and you're ready to go. Well, let's get started with ours. Will you walk us through the ingredients sure. that we need? Yes, we have, so the ingredients are chicken, of course. We're gonna need two cups of shredded chicken. I already went ahead and picked from my uh, rotisserie chicken. And the fun part um, of this is like you can give a piece to um, to your children and they can help you, you know, shred it with their hands. Not you don't necessarily need to use a knife. And also you can decide if you want more of the white meat or the dark meat, that is up to you. Um, I did a mix of uh, a little bit of both. Then we're gonna need um, some onion, white onion or yellow onion, or red onion if you have, you happen to not have a white onion, that's fine. A mix of uh, red and green peppers. Then we need salt and pepper, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of paprika, olive oil to start cooking, some tomato paste, some chicken broth that you can have a store-bought chicken broth or any broth that you have. If you don't have chicken, you can use vegetable or any other kind of broth. Or even if you don't have broth, you can use water. And last but not least, some green olives. Yeah, well, so we have all of these ingredients here, mixed as well, and I love the kind of flexibility with the types of peppers you can use and the kids really getting at that rotisserie chicken and shredding it is such a perfect thing for kids to do, especially with little ones, but older kids could do all of this by themselves, which is amazing. Wow. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> That will be fun. She is like, ready, ready to go. She's all ready right. To go. So I'm heating up a pot. Uh, I put in a little bit of high heat here. Medium heat. Yes. And then add the uh, the onions. Uh, olive oil. Oh, olive olive oil first. Yeah, we heat the olive oil. Or you can use any other oil. If you don't have olive oil, you can use canola, vegetable, any other oil that you might have. Great. I'm gonna add the onions. There we go. And the mix of peppers. I got green and red pepper. All right, Olive, let's add our green and red peppers too. Yay! I love peppers. Me too. So colorful. And as soon as you see that you're getting a little bit of color, you're gonna add your tomato paste. About, to about tomato paste, I think this one is double concentrated sometimes, and you probably get this question a lot. Some people prefer not double concentrated, but this is what I got. <laughs> I'm gonna use my little spatula to add the tomato paste. And the reason why we put tomato paste is to give it a um, a lot more color. All right, so we have the tomato paste in the pot. And Gabby, while this is cooking, I really want to hear about how you learned how to cook. Were you a kid when you started cooking? I was. Maybe not as young as Olive, uh, but I did start cooking uh, with my grandmother and my mom, of course, but mostly with grandma. Uh, I was very curious around the kitchen and she was very, um, you know, like, she let me be in there and always gave me little tasks to do. So yeah, I cook I cook at a young age. And then I went to culinary school. Yeah, so you, you learned how to do it. Oh, thank you. We don't need these quite yet. I think our next step is gonna be the salt and pepper. What is it? What is the next step here? Yes, we're gonna, as soon as you get a little bit of color, I always remember to scrape the bottom of your pot. So you get all that flavor. Oh, that sound, I love that sound. That's a great sound. Salt and pepper, yes. I got it all ready. Can you grab the salt and pepper? Oh, you have a pepper. What do we start with? Which one do you want to start with? 
This one. This one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pepper's going in. Yay! No pepper. Yeah, do. I'm watching really closely to learn her tricks. <laughs> She's got good seasoning technique. I am sure. Let's start. I am sure. And then we're gonna add the broth. I got chicken broth, but like I said before, if you don't have chicken broth, you can use any other broth you have, or if you don't have any, you can go ahead and put some water. So you just need liquid at this point. Exactly. To make Should we put in the broth? this uh, base for our chicken. And the reason why I don't put a lot of spices is because um, the rotisserie chicken already comes with a lot of flavors. So I am, uh, ideally you taste the rotisserie chicken first, so you know how it tastes and what it's lacking of. So if you want to make this a little bit spicier, you can put some chili flakes or red pepper flakes, um, any other spice that you like. Which one is your favorite spice at home? Uh, do you have a favorite spice at home? What do you put on top of your apples? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. We eat a lot of cinnamon in this house. I wouldn't, I wouldn't discard the idea of adding a little cinnamon to this also. You know, like I think oh, it's... Yeah? Yeah. Um, growing up, my grandma used to put a little bit of sugar on top of the empanadas. So now we're ready for our chicken. So I already shred my chicken and this is perfect to do with uh, children, especially if they are young. You can cut it in bigger chunks and then you can use their hands, wash hands, uh, to shred it and make it into smaller pieces. That's great. Yeah, we do a lot of recipes at ATK Kids with shredding things because that's such a perfect activity for kids, like age around five and under. It's the, the tactile stuff, the shredding and the mixing and the rolling and just getting your hands in there. So yeah, I, I, I think it's very important. Oh, we, lo we lost the sous chef over there. Yeah, we do a lot of cooking like this too in this house, which is great. Oh, and, and I'm sure you're going to love these empanadas. Yeah, let's move on to the next step. What happens next? So after you mix these and you added the chicken broth, we are going to add the shredded chicken. Two cups. Thank you. You ready to add the chicken? Are you ready to we add the chicken? We added the chicken. We were at two ahead of a schedule. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to add it here. Oh, this looks fantastic. And I'm going to mix and now we're gonna add some more flavor. The spices we got were cumin and paprika. I'm a big fan of cumin. I think it's my favorite spice. I love cumin. I what love does it smell like? cumin, especially in empanadas. All right, cumin is in. Paprika. Paprika. And it's gonna that start being so good. I know. So one thing before I forget, it's Molly, when you add the chicken and the flavors, you're gonna cover this to bring it to a boil. Okay. It's a very quick um, two, three minutes. And as soon as it boils, you're gonna uncover and cook for another eight to 10 minutes. Okay, great. So we will cover, <laughs> a lot of balancing act here. We're gonna cover this to bring it to a boil. And then as soon as it's boiling, uncover it and let it cook for eight to 10 minutes. Yes, and the next step will be to add the olives. So the olives that I get are actually pitted. And basically you just have to break them in pieces. And this is another activity you can do with children. Uh, you can break them in half with your, with your hands, super easy. We're gonna cook it for eight to 10 minutes, maybe a little less, because remember your chicken is already cooked. So basically what you're trying to get here is to get all the flavors to marry, like we say in the kitchen, to get well combined and so the chicken will absorb all those other extra flavors we just put in there. Delicious. All right, so eight to 10 minutes. Eight to 10 and minutes. Our filling will be good. Our filling will be ready. So we are ready to add some olives. That's the last step. 
You do you add these? You add these olives to the hot filling. You can actually before it starts to cool down. My recipe says to when it starts cooling down, as soon as it boils and you uncover it, you can add the olives right now. Or if you forget, you can add them later. Or you can put no olives. That's up to you. So it's, this recipe is extremely flexible. But let's go ahead and add them now. That sounds great. I I love a flexible recipe, especially for kids. It makes it so, so much, much easier. Yes. But my, my olives are in. I chopped mine all up ahead of time, so they were just chopped. But awesome. they're in here now, and I'm stirring it in. Yes, oh my God, this looks amazing. This looks so good, Gabby. This looks so good. Thank you. I hope she likes it. This is all for Olive. <laughs> One little thing <laughs> I learned the hard way. When you buy this jar olives, make sure you rinse them because they tend to be, uh, you know, they, they put them in water with salt and sometimes um, a little bit of vinegar, so they can get a little salty. So I will give it a mm -hmm. nice rinse before adding them to this, otherwise your filling will have like a strong salty flavor. That's a really good tip. So rinse the olives before you put them. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> All right, so our filling is done and we're gonna have to let it cool before we assemble the empanadas. If you have a bit of time, ideally, um, you can make the filling ahead and have it in your fridge for up to uh, three to four days. You can also freeze the filling and it freezes fantastically. So it's super uh, easy when it's, when it's towing to fill the empanadas and that's gonna give you um, a lot of juice when you have it like uh, frozen, from frozen. So Molly, we're gonna let this cool, but to be honest, I already have um, a little bit of filling prepared ahead of time and it's already cold enough so we can go ahead and start assembling the empanadas. That is perfect and as a coincidence, I also have some already filled filling, so we should just go right into rolling out our empanadas. We, we have a, a funny word that I wanted to try to, to teach Olive to how to say it. We say repulgue, that's the way we close the empanadas. Oh, she will like, as soon as she returns, she will love to try <laughs> it. all right. She took a little break, I love Just it. Just a little break. <laughs> all right, how is that uh, feeling, Molly? It looks good. I have a nice, cool filling right here, and I have my empanada dough rounds. Good. Got the filling over here, too. It cooled off. Um, this is my swap, and I also have my empanada dough. I like to buy this kind. This is the closest to what we like in South America and they are for oven baking. So what I suggest to people, usually when they ask me what kind of a store-bought uh, dough they should get, you can order them online, you can check around uh, your area what's available, you can go ahead and buy some puff pastry and cut some discs and try to do it. The most important part is that you read the instructions in the package uh, for the cooking. I know that this kind, it's gonna take me about 30 minutes in the oven, uh, 350 or 375, depending on your oven. I always tell people that the most important part, one of the most important tips in the kitchen is knowing your oven and how high it gets, right? Yeah, that's so <laughs> important. Do you have a little oven thermometer? I have, have I have this amazing oven that it will tell me uh, what's the temperature inside and yes. Oh. Yeah, it's a... Um, That's perfect, yeah. That accuracy is so important. Yeah. And I have I have slightly different empanada dough rounds than, than you do, and we were talking about this earlier, how this is all part of our pandemic kitchen, so it's all about going with the flow. Talking about pandemic, my dog just showed up in my kitchen. I think he's smelling the <laughs> uh, feeling, but he can't have this, unfortunately. So yes, the greatness about this uh, empanada, though, is that you have to keep it in the freezer and just bring it down a couple of hours ahead, uh, you know, when you know you're gonna roll. Um, I prefer to use, uh, you know, like a, a large surface on my table, if you have uh, that possibility. Um, and what I like about them is that they come with like this little plastic in the back, so it kind of like separates them and you can pull them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull four out. Yours look a little larger, so you might need a little more filling. So I have four already out. I have four out. And just so people know, this is 
This is a product that you can buy in the frozen aisle of the grocery store. Um, and they're pretty widely available and it's a lot easier than making your own dough, especially for kids. There are recipes for dough uh, to bake them. Um, most commonly, I would say um, in households in Argentina, um, people bake empanadas more often than frying them. Uh, frying them, usually you buy them outside. They are like these stores that they only sell empanadas. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's when you, you know, you treat yourself and you actually buy them from there because they come um, fried and obviously they taste amazing. Are we ready to assemble? I am ready. Let's right. do it. One little thing, you need a little cup with a small amount of water and that's going to be to dip your fingers to use that as the glue to close your empanada dough. And another tip from a pro, I can consider myself a pro because a while back I used to sell empanadas. I got a food vendor's license and I was selling empanadas in the street to make a living. So in order to make all the empanadas equal and have the same amount of um, filling, I started using an ice cream scoop to measure it up. What kind of empanadas did you sell from your empanada truck? The favorite ones were beef, uh, and I made them in the style from Buenos Aires. That's the uh, province that I'm from in Argentina. So they're called porteñas. Uh, so it has ground beef and onions, peppers, olives, and raisins. Raisins are very important. I, I sold chicken empanadas, spinach with bechamel, uh, bechamel sauce and cheese. I had a sweet empanada with guava paste and cream cheese. Wow, there's so many different types of empanadas. Yes. This is so exciting. Well, the first step is like after you have all the dough lined up in front of you, you want to put the same amount of uh, filling in the center of the disc. So like I said, I'm using the ice cream scoop, so I have the same amount in each empanada. So I'm using a tablespoon. Should I do just one kind of heaping one and, tablespoon? One in the heaping is region? perfect. One and a half, yes. And I know the recipe says it makes 24 empanadas, but some packages come with 20 um, discs. We call these, in Spanish we call them, in, in Argentina we call them tapas or discos because they look like a disc. So some packages come with 20, some packages come with 12. So. If you have extra filling, you can um, go ahead and freeze it. That's what I was just, um, you know, explaining before that when you cool it down, if you're not ready to make your empanadas that day, you can freeze it and do it another day. And always have like frozen filling. Next step, you need to get your two index fingers wet a little bit. And let me show you, just wet half of the dough. You can use one finger if you want. I like to do two. I like to have a towel nearby so I kind of wipe uh, a little bit of the wetness before I close them. And then, since you have this plastic under, this is the easiest part. You're gonna fold them over and get the wet edge into the dried edge there. And then on the other side, I like to keep the plastic in this part because it helps you. Oh, you took the arrows. Okay, sometimes I leave it. I, I took, took it off. Nice. I already Good. made a mistake. I, no, 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 it's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's not written in stone. It's just sometimes if your hands are too hot or, if, or it's too hot in your kitchen, the dough is gonna start going very like flexible. So the plastic kind of yeah. helps you keep it together. But there you go. Uh, make sure you don't put this in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have it. You have it closed. Yes. Make I sure have that it all the edges best. are tipped. What I like to do, I like to work in an assembly form, like in a professional kitchen. So I'm going to go ahead and close these four ones here. Just in half. So I'm going slowly or quick. I bet, I bet you can do this very quickly if you needed to. How many empanadas do you think that you could assemble in 10 minutes? You know, it's very interesting. I never time myself, but I will say a lot. 
I have made uh, <laughs> 300, 400. Um, interesting enough, uh, this way of closing them that I'm gonna show you in a, in a second, it's called repulgue. It's a way of twisting the dog or pinching the dog and creating this seal, right? So when I was about probably seven or eight years old, um, my grandmother, who was an amazing cook, probably the best cook I know to this day, she wasn't really good at doing the repulgue. So you, she used to use a fork to close them. That's totally fine. In fact, I, I used the fork when I was selling them because it gives the effect of a bigger empanada. So that was a trick of mine. <laughs> But when um, she tried to teach me the repulgue, she had like a weird way of doing it. So I started doing it in front of her. And apparently, um, I was doing it exactly the same way her mom did, but I never met her mom. My, oh, my, wow. my great grandma passed when I was one. So I probably, I don't know, it came into a dream or something, but I, uh, she got all emotional because I was doing it exactly like her mom and it was in my head. And then everybody knew I was good at it. So for every party, every, you know, like, birthday party or whatever, we made empanadas, I was the one in charge of closing them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I love that this is something that's been passed down in your family yes. for so many generations, too. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. All right, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Do you wanna see it? Okay, show me. I, yes. I put, are you right-handed or left-handed? Please say right. I'm, I'm right hand. Oh, great. Um, so you put the empanada on your left hand, and then with your right hand, you start from the top, from the rounded side, and you just go inside. There. Okay. You see it? There. I... Mine is leaking a little, but that's okay. It's part of the game. Oh, wow. Yours looks beautiful. Thank you. So is it basically just like folding, folding each little... Putting in. and twisting because the idea is that you want the crimping to like seal it. When you go to one of these empanada stores, they have a different crimping for each flavor. So can you imagine how many different ones they have? I did it. How does that look? Oh my God, it looks amazing. Thank you. Make sure you have a sheet pan that fits in your oven, a covering parchment paper. Molly, I'm gonna check on the empanadas I put ahead of time, so I'll be right back. My oven is right here. Sounds great. Convection oven is the trick, I'm telling you. All right, I'm gonna make another one. Let's do it. So when I was probably 10 or 12 in Buenos Aires, these empanada stores have like large windows where you can walk by and they usually have um, some employees on the window um, closing the empanada. So it's like sort of like, like a, you, you pass by and you can watch them. <laughs> so one time my mom, I don't know, probably was the end of the month or she didn't have money. My mother had like three jobs just to pay for the very expensive private school I went where I learned English. Um, so she told me she was going to send me to this place to work there. <laughs> Sorry, this is not child labor. Uh, and I was so happy. I was like, sure, let's do it. But you know, it's just like, it was just a joke. All right, so there you go. <laughs> I have four empanadas. Oh man, you're so fast. <laughs> I'm only on three. Let me do my last one. <laughs> you want me to show you one with the fork? I can fill one more up. And make I yeah. Need to, show us, show us how to yeah. get with the fork. Okay, that would be great. Let me go get a fork. I think I had a fork right here. I'm gonna take the empanadas out of the oven, um, so we don't have them burn. Que belleza! That's very Argentine. They look amazing. You see them? Oh, look at those! But I'm those gonna take great. them out of the way so they I don't burn anybody. So to close them with the fork. You put the empanada down. Can you see it, Molly, right there? Mm. I, I, can do it in my, I can do it in my hand, but ideally you want this in a flat surface. And then without, you gotta be careful not to poke the empanada. You just go around the edge, like you'll do a patty or, 
There are many things that are creamed like that. Yeah, like a, a pie crust. A pie crust, there you go. It was like in the tip of my tongue. So I found this easier and this is something that you definitely can do with children. So everybody has their own. That looks amazing. I know, this one looks like happy. <laughs> that is a very happy empanada. There you go. Some people like to make a little egg wash and like brush the, um, the egg wash on top. I really don't. I, I, I just, I think it's a one unnecessary step, but that's a, a matter of preference. All right, so Molly, I'm ready to put mine in the oven. Um, oven has to be at 350, 375, depending on your oven. They are gonna be in there for 25 to 30 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna go down here, not going anywhere. There you go. Always make sure that you check them half the way through and rotate your uh, sheet pan so they get even color. Amazing. I am so excited to bake ours and have try them with Olive a little bit later when she returns. There you go. <laughs> it came Those out tiny. Amazing, Gabby. I, I cannot wait to try my own. <laughs> this has been so fun to cook empanadas with you, Gabby. Thank you so much for joining us for this. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. I'm so glad. And so everyone should check out the Young Chefs Club from America's Test Kitchen Kids. This is a monthly subscription box program. And January's box is the dumpling box. And in it, we have a recipe for empanadas totally from scratch, inspired by Gabby. We talked to Gabby when we were developing the recipe in our test kitchen. Uh, so you can check that out at atkkids.com. Sounds so excited and can't wait. Yay! Amazing. <laughs>